So let's make sure we have fun and, and run it, okay? Enjoy the show, guys. Enjoy the live event. We've been putting this on for a long time and ready to make it happen. Here's what it, here is what will happen today. I want your engagement. There's going to be a lot to discuss. We're going to have a roller coaster ride tonight. Are you ready? Go ahead and let me know in the chat, please, if you're ready for what's going to happen in the 3% parent live event. Let me know if you guys are ready. Let me know in the chat, please. Let me know in the chat. Tell me in the chat if you guys are ready, because this is going to be a roller coaster of a ride. Let's move. Here is my promise to you today. I can show you how to level up from a 97% parent to a 3% parent. If you don't know who I am, you may or may not have heard of me. I'm known as the angry soccer guy, Kyle C. Wilson official, Coach Kyle, Kyle Wilson. That's what you guys know me as. Now, I want to address the cow in the room. First thing we're going to talk about is the cow. You might know what I'm talking about. If I was in charge of cash cow right now, based on this live event, I would be absolutely myself about this live event. Absolutely. Now, Kyle, when you say cash cow, what do you actually mean? Great question. I'm going to give you the actual information here in a second. A cash cow is a mature platform. The stage of the life cycle that they're in is a cash cow business. They are just printing money. They have a huge percentage of the market, so a big market share. They aren't trying to provide, say, new value. They are simply maximizing and monetizing their audience, which means, in English, the translation is, they are trying to make as much money as possible by spending very little and providing little value. That's a cash cow. Does this sound like cash cows want to do right by the kids? Let me know in the chat. Does this sound like a cash cow wants to do right by the kids? If they're trying to maximize their monetization, does that sound like they're trying to do right by the kids? Let me know in the chat, please. Let me know in the chat if you think that's the case. Let's keep moving. I want to be clear. The blueprint I'm sharing with you today Works perfectly with parents who have players at any age and level. So U6, U7, U8, U9, all the way through to U18. It doesn't really matter. It does not matter if your player is recreational, developmental, or competitive. It doesn't matter. And I know this blueprint works because I've used it for 10 plus years, and there are other parents have implemented it with their players. This blueprint works not from theory, but from experience. Are we on the same page? You let me know if we're on the same page. Yes? Let's absolutely begin. So, you can see here on the top left, 3% parent blueprint, or level one, the objective how to level up from a 97% to a 3% soccer parent. That is the goal, the objective. So again, the 3% parent blueprint, level one, the objective, a 97% parent to 3% soccer parent. Let's go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes or no? Can you hear me? Yes? No? Let me know. If you can hear me. They're saying yes. Go back though. I think I missed one thing. This is what you will witness and understand today. So here is something you need to write down. So I told you to get a pen and paper. Your child's football development is the priority between birth to 15 years old, not the win and loss record. 
I want to address your three possible questions right now. What is the deal with the 3% parent blueprint? The 3% parent blueprint was created because there is a 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 plus year old player who, one, has parents that live vicariously through them, two, ripped off by the cash cows, or three, simply have uneducated parents. Second question. Is Kyle finally going to sell us something <clears throat> outside of cost? That's what we're going to answer today. But you'll find the answer to that question in a moment. But first, have you ever thought about why the cash cow organizations your child has played for have not produced the same type of content, especially for free or at cost? Their business model thrives on uneducated parents. They make a thousand percent more money when you don't know what is in the best interest of your child. Straight up. For the last year, I've been giving away content upon content for free. So you guys actually have over 2,500 hours of content free. I will answer question two in a moment. But first, by the end of this live event, you will find out what today really is all about, and as well. A special project I've been working on for over two years. Just remember, though, available on my YouTube channel is over $42,873 worth of content, 100% free. You just have to smash the subscribe button to get it. Now, I can't tell you what the special project is yet. You'll find out in a moment. Just got to wait for it. But what I can tell you is, it's worth more than a cell phone, worth less than a Mercedes, and every single person here live will get one for free. And you will be the only individuals who get one because you made it to this live event. I might have to change that though now, considering the fact that this whole technological problem happened. The reason why I made it this way though, is when I tell you in the future you need to be there, you'll be there. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. If you couldn't tell by now, the U.S. youth soccer system is in complete denial about the issues currently affecting 97% of the country. That's a problem. And to tell you the truth, I feel that I have a moral responsibility to at least put the power back into the hands of the consumer. Do you know who the consumer is? You, the parents, I feel like I have a moral responsibility for that. I feel a responsibility because there is a young kid who has parents who mean the best, absolutely mean the best, but are living vicariously through their kids by some of the following methods. Forcing their child to play, putting their be child's best interest last, joystick coaching, Screaming, yelling from the sidelines, following the badges, spending tens of thousands of dollars on scrimmages and flights across the country for a U10 player. <laughs> Thinking their child will earn a full ride to college. Not giving their player responsibility. Berating in the car rides home in two events. Thinking a U9 final is the World Cup. Thinking their U8 player should be a striker only thinking their player needs to play 77 or 99. Thinking that a seven, eight, nine year old should be focusing on passing, acting toxic on the field, not understanding the levels of play in the US. Who doesn't let their kids make mistakes? For the kids who have to look at their parents after making a mistake. And then the last one, forgetting why we're even here. For the kids. We can't forget why we're here. And the whole reason why we're here is because your son or daughter says, Mom, Dad, I want to play ball. Children participating in sports are experiencing and fulfilling their journey. Not my journey and not your journey as parents. Their journey. It's their game, 
their practice and it's their time. Chris said the following about my content. Good morning, Kyle. I would like to thank you for the content you've provided. It's been extremely helpful. The information you've provided has opened my eyes as a parent as to what potentially needs to be done for my son's soccer future. The rest is just him explaining his background. Hassan said the following. Happy New Year, Coach Kyle. Thanks for all the knowledge. I found your page last spring and super grateful that I've been able to learn from you and apply it in my son's development. I've included a few videos of Ian playing 1v1 against me. I feel that you've been a part of his development. I hope you have a great and better year this coming 2024, maybe two to three million followers. Roland said the following. Good evening, Kyle. New soccer parent entering this world. My son just turned eight years old, starting in a rec league. I was a typical parent at first session, put the ball out of his area and pass it as much as you could. Luckily, I came across your YouTube channel and started looking at all your videos and reading more into youth soccer. In just a few short months, I realigned my attitude and have made choices to further enhance the development of my son and the nuggets of information you provided us. I can't think of better information to new parents than to watch your channel. I appreciate your content and look forward to your playbook. Please send me over any information in order to receive this valuable information so I may guide my son the best I can. Thank you, Roland. No problem, Roland. Steve said the following about the 3% parent blueprint. Great content as expected. I thought the Pulisic video was a little redundant, but maybe the point really needs to be hammered home with other parents. After watching these, you've, you have motivated me to try and pull my son's entire team out of his club or just go independent and start a new tiny club that prioritizes player development. I started talking to the coach over the weekend. Thanks for everything. Jose said the following. Kyle, thank you so much for all of your solid content you post on a daily basis. I've shared your profile with all of our parents and coaches. Both boys clubs team to a resounding positive plus. I actually made reference to joysticking and the idea of sending it, et cetera, in a parent meeting, which at first didn't come off as too acceptable. However, the more I spoke about it and described it, parents agreed. Your content is great. and gives me a great tool for my two boys as well as the club in general. Again, thank you for your dedication and hard work. It goes a long way. Christian, you're making DOCs nervous in the DMV. And because, and I asked him, why do you say that? And because of the truth, man, you're exposing so much. Everyone here, everyone knows you here in the DMV, truly full circle, how you're making an impact without even being in the DMV. Love the message, man. Hassan said the following about the 3% parent blueprint. Hi, Coach Kyle. I watched the intro and the first three classes. It's mind blowing. I think the fact that you provide, I think the fact that the US soccer is putting profits over development makes me appreciate the info you're providing even more. The kids' development starts with parents being educated because what most parents are learning from clubs, what most coaches out there is BS. I'll continue watching classes tonight. I'll watch class four, youth development tonight. Definitely look good. looking forward to it. Thanks. And the final one. T said the following about the 3% parent blueprint. Man, it's a ton of content. I've paid 250 to 500 for less in other types of courses. Probably worth more like 500 to 1,000 if you look at all the bonuses and documents. Wow. The content actually works to help you as a parent level up and educate you through the youth soccer system. And the 3% parent blueprint 100% works. It's your opportunity to move away from the crowd known as the 97% parents. To get away from the toxicity and to just focus on your child's development and journey. It's a process, guys. But to do that, you as a parent need to level up. You may remember my parents spent $82,593 on my youth soccer career from 7 to 18 years old. 7 to 18. And the only reason why I'm here today in front of you is because of the strategies outlined in the 3% parent blueprint. That's the only reason. There's no other. Before I share some of them, I need to tell you what my other goal today is. To make real youth soccer education accessible to everyone. And I want you to be the judge. I want you to be the judge and see if I live up to the expectation today. 
I will do my absolute best. That is my promise. Today, I'm going to deliver and help two types of people. Group one, known as help yourself. The ones that are struggling so-called to, to breathe. The people who are really struggling to provide a chance for their player due to lack of resources or education. I promise you, I will help you get closer today for free. And you'll want to stay to the end as I deliver on that big time. Now for everyone else in group two. For those of you in the position to help me pay it forward, I'm going to show you how it's in the children's and parents' best long-term interest to have a parent who is educated. Education is truly key, and paying it forward can help a parent who truly needs the support and realization to level up. We can accomplish both our missions together. Only together can we put the power back into the hands of parents and truly force change in the U.S. soccer landscape. At the end of the day, no one is coming to save you. The longer you are uneducated, the more money you spend, the more you stress, the more costly mistakes you will make. You need to realize the only person who can save you and your child is you. Real life is not a fairy tale type of story. You're going to have to learn this stuff. End of story. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I want you to become a 3% parent. Are you ready? Let's take a step back and look at this from a distance. I love the worldview, by the way. Question for you. Who here would like to truly help their child realize their dreams? Let me know in the chat. Who here? would like to truly help their child realize their dreams, whether it's in football or not, whatever their dream is, who here would like to truly help the child realize their dreams? Otherwise, this would have been over right now. <laughs> so thankfully, you want to help your child realize their dream. So rather than talk about how to help your child achieve their dreams, I'm going to show you the opposite effect. How could we guarantee that they never achieve it? Different strategy, different point. Can you guess the answer? Write it in the chat. How could we guarantee they never achieve it? Let me know in the chat. Write it there. Let's see. What? Oh, stressing them. I guess we're going to find out in a moment. Let's go. Stay uneducated. If you're uneducated and you don't know what to look for and what to do, that's going to cause your child to not achieve their dreams. It's so important that you're educated. Especially in a country where youth sports isn't about the kids. It's all about the dollar bills and maximizing profit, which we learned 10 minutes ago from the whole cash cow spiel. And individuals that are uneducated, and I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars at the newest badge, which comes on your shoulder, organization or marketing scheme of why your U12 player needs to play in this league. You may be ironically chuckling, but some of you, some of you are doing this right now. Let's assume your child really wants to play at least college in the future. You know that skills and ability are a prerequisite, right? I think that's pretty obvious. Of course, yes. Here is the second key to write down for you. There are three keys to maximizing player potential in youth football. You need to have a bought-in player, a bought-in parent, and a coach who can develop and cares to do the right thing for the kids. Sometimes it really is just that simple. There is a reason when we look at the top level players, they are really that good fundamentally. And here's a picture, if you can't tell, that's me, my brother on the far side, and Luis Nani in the middle. And this guy is a top level player even at 36 years old. Unbelievable, the guy's skilled. 
players at that level really are exceptional and just ridiculously good. You may have a good player. Your son, your daughter may be a good player, but you don't know how to actually help them break through the system that is designed to fail your child because all it's about, bills. This is why I continue to highlight the importance of parent education. Most players that make it out have a plan and parents who think about the longer term game versus the win at all cost mentality that plagues 97% of parents. There is a reason why I call it the 3% parent blueprint. The goal is to level you up from being the average parent, so the 97% who do some of the following. Joystick, scream on the sideline nonstop, lives through their kids, ruins the car ride, doesn't help the recovery process, thinks their child should play one position only, thinks the badge will help get them out, and my favorite one, hopes for the best. What you need to realize is, and to tell you the truth, it's not rocket science. For your child to make it out, they have to have the four following processes. They have to be good enough. They have to stand out. They have to do the right things off the field. And they have to have a network and or contacts. But the key is, for your child, where they play in the USA only truly matters when they are 15 years and older. That's so good, I'm going to say it again. For your child, where they actually play in the USA only truly matters when they are 15 years and older. You may ask why. The only players getting recruited younger than that are the ones that we call generational talents. A generational talent is someone like a Phil Foden, a Marcus Rashford, or a Lionel Messi, or countless others that have made a professional life starting at like 15, 16, 17 years old. That's a generational talent. And when I say that, I mean at the highest level. They're full-time pro, 15, 16, 17 years old, getting significant minutes. That's a generational talent. This is why I continue to highlight the importance of development. A great example of this would be what a U8 or U9 training session should look like for the average American player. So let me give you a snippet of what you will find inside the 3% parent blueprint. Here's an example training session structure of what it should look like for a U8, U9, hour and 30 minute session. Here are the four things they should be working on. Here are the durations typically that they should be working on. And then modify as necessary based on the level of the group. So phase one is technical activation, juggling and dribbling, that's it. Phase two, coordination, which would be speed and agility or basic coordination and mobility. Phase three would be a small-sided game of like a 1v1 or a 2v1. That's it. And then the final phase would be a game that's a like 3v3 or maybe if you really want to go big, you go 5v5. But you don't go above that. That's it. That's the secret. Here's what we're going to do today with our short time together. One. Share a few breakthroughs I've had when learning the importance of having educated parents. You get the lesson without the pain or the scars. Two, I'm going to give you guys a bunch of processes to consider for your child's development. Three, I'm going to invite you to join me on my mission of making real youth development education accessible to everyone. Four, we're going to move this on so you can rip up the box and dive into my last two years of work. And I got to tell you, it's been a lot of work. Is that fair? Let me know in the chat if that's fair. Let's see. Is it fair? You guys let me know if that's fair or not. It's unbelievable. Let's move forward. Now, I'm going to show you action steps. This is the first one called the pre-step. So it's before step one. And that is training and development always start at home. This is probably the most undervalued key in the United States of pay to play. And I'll tell you why before proceeding. If you expect that your coach for a cash cow, for example, to develop your son, ain't going to happen. 
It always starts at home. So before you can put the expectation that your child's going to be developed, it starts with you at home. And this is why I continue to highlight the importance of education and development, because you need to know what to do from at least a general standpoint and the pathway to take to help your child. That starts at home, not at club soccer. Let's see the next step. Step one, you need to find a coach. And you've heard me talk about this on Instagram multiple times. That development, let me say that again. You need to find a coach that develops and cares about doing the right thing for the players. That's huge. That is huge. I literally, <laughs> this it's crazy to think about. I literally would not be here today if it wasn't for this step. Because when I was six years old, my parents found a coach who cared and knew how to develop. If it wasn't for this individual, I probably would be a coach. In fact, I, I would guarantee this, that I would be a coach if I still got into coaching. Being on the sideline screaming, boot it, kick it, and send it. It's all because my parents found a guy who cared and developed that I am here today in front of you presenting this to you. Otherwise, if it wasn't for him, absolutely not, I wouldn't be here. And I'm still in contact with him today. That's how big this is. And I need you guys to understand, this is why it's the first step. You have to find a coach that knows what he's talking about in terms of development, and he cares about the kids or your son or daughter. Step two, you need to understand that player development is just like the stock market. The player will go through many highs and many lows throughout their journey. It's literally normal. There's going to be periods where you go, I don't think he looks too good or she looks too good. That's literally going to happen and you have to deal with it. There's no other, there is no other ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's normal. Step three, focus on the development methodology framework, which you have here below. One, core skill development. This is basic ball manipulation. Step two, which would be dribbling skills, which would be like fakes and feints, changes of direction, stops and starts, and escape moves. Three would be the implementation of 1v1 skills. So going at an opponent and focusing on the skill. Four, basic decision making. Five, and before I go to five, basic decision making would be like, do I dribble or do I pass? That's basic decision making. There's no other thing else. Five, passing skill. So how do you correctly use the technique to pass the ball? Six, receiving skill. How do you turn, receive the ball with the left foot or the right foot correctly? And then seven, advanced decision making. This would be way more complex than just basic decision making, but this would be things like, do I play a one-two? Do I move here? Why do I move here? Where do I reposition myself? There's so many little intricate details that go into advanced decision making that are only successfully achievable once the player has the first six. Step four, realizing Players that are missing step one through step three do not have the core skills necessary to implement passing concepts successfully. This means dribbling first before passing. Step five, understand it is much easier to teach a player to be creative and become a risk taker when we develop the ability to play free and dribble before even contemplating teaching them how to pass a ball. Step five, continue. I want you guys to think about a painter, like somebody that is an artist, for example. And the question I have for you is, who do you believe would be more creative? A person who has to pass the brush every 10 seconds or the one that can keep their brush until they finish their masterpiece? So let's think about this really. Like, like, let's deep dive this. You have a painter. I'm painting. And I start painting on the board. And then at 10 seconds, I got to throw the brush or pass it to the next person. And then... I got to wait 10 seconds to get my next brush. So then I get the brush again and I start painting. Clock, I got to pass the brush. Who do you think is going to be more creative? The one that can keep the brush the entire time where they work on their design? Or the one that has to pass the brush every 10 seconds who's going to be stressing because they can only get so much done in those 10 seconds? I don't know what you guys think. What's interesting is Scaloni, the Argentinian head coach, the one that just won the World Cup with Lionel Messi in 2022 just came out talking about how the game is losing its creativity. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will read the bottom snippet in purple. 
We are losing the essence of football. And not only at the professional level, but at the children's level as well. My children play in Spain and they are overwhelmed with information. They receive the ball and are already being told what to do. Like, think about that for a second. Even at the professional level and at the kids' level. This is a guy that's won the World Cup as a coach and he's telling us this. That's a red flag that we really need to be paying attention to. Here's a second quote from him. Same guy. Why? Sure, there are no dribblers because if they can barely receive the ball and, and if they barely receive the ball, you say pass it. Imagine if Messi, when he was eight years old, had been told all the time, pass it. His coaches, today we wouldn't have him. It's something impressive. Since football has ended up being such a big thing, everyone reads, studies, and believes that with that they can lead. You tell a seven or eight year old child to draw the diagonal to make the coverage, he is seven years old. Let him play ball, make mistakes, and when he is 14 or 15, we start correcting him. It is a message for the future. This is a sport and the beauty of football should not be lost. I 100% agree. Step six, be a parent that is comfortable and okay with your child making mistakes. Mistakes are a part of the learning growing process. Don't be that parent that their child looks directly at them after making a mistake. Don't be that parent. And what I'm talking about is they're playing in the game and then they go like this after making a mistake and they're looking right at you because they're waiting to see if you're paying attention because they know that you're going to rip them for it if you're paying attention. Step seven, understand that the league or badge that is on their shoulder is intrinsically irrelevant until they are 15 years old. Why? No one is getting a college scholarship or a pro contract from 6 to 14 years old unless they are a generational talent. Understand that. Step eight, realize the importance of nutrition in what your child is eating or drinking is make or break in the long run. And that's huge. It's so important. Step nine, realize the importance of taking care of the body for maximal performance output. Step 10, understand there is one single element your child can control. This starts with the letter E and ends with the letter T. And I gave it to you in the bottom left. It's called effort. That's the one thing they can control. They're going to make hundreds of mistakes every single day. And you probably, as a parent, make mistakes every single day. It's a part of the business. Step 11, there is a difference between exposure and being exposed when it comes to recruitment at the next level. So think college or professional. Exposure is going to an event where there are recruiters. Being exposed is if those recruiters are actually watching your player. There's a huge difference because you can go to an event and there can be a recruiter watching your game. That does not mean, however, they are watching your player. There's a big difference. They can be sitting there at the game watching. But here's what you probably don't understand. And I wasn't even going to give you this, but I'm going to tell you of what happened with the, uh, with the live event. And that when a, let's use college recruiters. So let's say a college coach comes to watch your child's game. The reason why they're at that game is because they're already specifically watching somebody. And if you haven't been in communication with the coach already, chances are not in your favor, not in your son or your daughter's favor. Now, there's a chance that you could be a standout and that grabs their attention. But understand that when a college recruiter or even a pro scout comes to watch a game, they are there already looking at maybe one or two specific people. That's it. So if you haven't already had that recruitment part with them, it's going to be very hard for your kid. And that's why there's a huge difference between exposure and being exposed. Now, the end goal with becoming a 3% parent is four main ideas. One, actually understand what it takes to help your child level up. Two, supportive parent that does the opposite of the 97% who joystick, berate, and scream at their kids. Three, 
Be comfortable and okay with your child making mistakes as it's a part of the learning process. Now, before continuing, I want to hit you with this nugget. Think about yourself, or at least I'll give you my perspective about me. I always learn the best when I have to go through something. Does it suck? You know how many times, for example, my parents told me something or a friend told me something or even my wife told me something and said, hey, you're not going to want to do that. And I'm going to say, well, I'm going to do it. And then you do it and you're like, well, I should have listened. You know, give me a thumbs up if that's happened to you in the chat where you, somebody's given you an advice. You think about it or maybe you let it go in one ear and out the other. You don't do it. You go through the error and you go, I probably should have listened to that person. But that's because from my experience, I learn way more from going through a mistake through the experience of it versus somebody telling me it. And that's just, especially with young kids, that's extremely normal. Four, and this is probably the most important piece. Realize that this is your child's journey, not your journey. You have to take that step back and separate your child versus you. This is their journey, not your journey. Let's talk about value now. You've probably heard me talking about multiple times why value is so important in the youth game, especially in 2024. Understand, and this is key, that pay to play go away in my lifetime. It will not go away. Coaches need to get paid. Fields need to be paid for to be able to be used. Whatever other costs that I can't think of in my moment, in, in my mind in this moment that come. Pay to play is not going away. So instead of just throwing your money, let's invest in your child's development. Does that sound fair? Give me a thumbs up in the chat if that sounds fair. Because you can keep throwing money at something, but let's, and I'm going to give you the secret in a minute. My mindset shift is let's invest in your child's development because you know, you're know you putting money into something. Like my parents, as I told you earlier, paid $82,593 in my youth soccer career. Well, that was an investment. Let me know in the chat. Okay, Mr. Angry Soccer Guy, how can we determine that? It's a good question. Let's break it down. This is what I would want to invest in for my child's youth soccer career. <laughs> Development. Challenges, growth, sacrifice, struggling, adaptation, and setbacks. I could probably make more to this, but that's seven right there. Notice, I didn't say wins or losses. I didn't say it. Didn't even use the word win or loss. Now, example, you pay fees every single year of roughly... 2000 to $10,000 plus dollars a year for your child to play, depending on where your, your son's playing at or your, your child's playing at. My opinion is you should be, and this is what I'm advocating for really, you should be receiving more value compared to the cost. So example, let's say you spend, let's use a $3,000 example. You should be receiving value greater than 3000 So 3500 that would be a win. If you pay 5000 like I just said, you should be receiving value more than 5000 from the organization that you're paying. That would be a win, but anything less would be a loss. So the example is if you spend or you're paying 5000 you're investing 5000 but you are receiving 1500 in value, that you're receiving 1500 in value, and this is happening across the country. That somebody's spending soccer, that's the investment, but they're receiving $1,500 in value. The problem in 2020 that for 97% of the parents and players in the country, they are operating at a significant loss every single year. You're literally being ripped off. But how do you determine this, Mr. Angry Soccer Guy? Here is my youth soccer value calculator. This lets you determine the hourly rate. So how much you're paying for quote unquote babysitting soccer. That's what I call it as a joke. So you can determine how much you're paying per hour. 
And then you can determine, which is the, the value part here of what I call considerations and bonuses. This is on a plus one, zero, or negative one scale. I have a video that walks you through how to actually use it. And then I have a PDF that you can go download and implement for yourself to break down the cost and the considerations and bonuses that you use in this format to determine if you are under value at break even, which would be at the $3,000 example, you're at 3,000 or you're above value or you're getting value. Now, I wanna talk about level two. And you're probably thinking level two, level two. Now let's look at your child's immediate to long-term development. If you're really ready to help your child level up, I'm going to share with you a secret, but it may be tough at first for your child to implement. Once they buy in and they take responsibility, you'll see ownership in their own process. And it can be used in other parts of their life outside of the game. You're going to give them more responsibility. You're probably thinking, really, Kyle? That's the secret? Yes, actually. And I'm going to tell you what they are right now. There are five immediate and implementable actions for your players. They need to know their schedule. Not from mom and dad. They need to know their schedule. They need to prepare their own equipment and gear for practice or for games, not mom and dad. They need to understand what they're eating and what they're drinking. And then they need to know about their traveling. So for example, if they're in the car, they need to be preparing themselves mentally for practice. A parent can help support that. And then five would be when they arrive to the facility, they are locking in. Seems simple, but honestly, some kids struggle with owning their responsibilities. But here's one brilliant strategy to help them implement. I will show you my preparing for practice framework. Five actions for your player. This is literally a documentation that you can sit down with your player. And they have to go through these actions and it's like a checklist for them. And as a secret, I will also show you my preparing for practice framework for actions for parents. This is for you to understand and realize that you need to put the responsibility on your child. This will help you and help your child stand up to take responsibility for their practice and for their journey because they have come to you and said, mom, dad, I want to play ball. Well, then you need to be redirecting. At least that's what I would do if it was my child. I would be redirecting the responsibility to them because this is what they said they want to do. Remember, this is their dream. But you may be stumbling on something I said earlier. Kyle, you tell me I need to find a coach who cares and knows about development, but I don't know how to find that. <laughs> it's not easy. Well, great news. I have my secret weapon I have made just for you. It breaks down the two types of coaches, what I call a player developer and a team preparer. So you can see a small snippet here that kind of highlights what it is. And this is from the actual documentation. Player developers focus on the kids' needs. Team preparers focus on God's soccer points and tournament wins. I give you my 12 questions that I would ask my child's coach or club before committing to the team. Here are the first six. What is your targets individually for my son? What is the focus of your training sessions? How do you want the team to play and why? What are the learning objectives and tangible targets for the year? Will my child have the opportunity to play up if he is dominating? What is your honest policy about playing time? Is it given or do they earn it? And so much more but I don't want to overwhelm you with information. You'll just have to dive in. I will show you my what to look for framework coach edition. And the next logical question would be, which is fair, that's great, Kyle, but what about a trainer? Because you know, there's a lot of fancy guys on Instagram as trainers. Cool, fantastic question. I got you. 
I got you. Maybe you saw this video on social media. And I, I got to tell you before moving forward, this is probably my favorite one I've ever done. Like, I love this video. It was hysterical. And the, the funniest thing about it was we made it on the fly. Like, we, me and my wife, like, created a routine or, like, a skit. And then last second I said, you know what would be really cool? Let's do this. Anyways, you need to be careful of what I call training that sales methodology. Training that sells focuses on these three elements. This is from my experience. They're going to do a lot of like two cone or three cone or maybe four cone patterns where you do like pull, push, push, pull, push, push. That's beneficial for a player that is very, very low level in my opinion. Okay. The second one you're going to see is lots of cone exercises. So again, same type of thing. They're going to just do that on repeat. And what's interesting is, let's use the two cone um, pattern as an example. I could go to a field. I could do a private session. I could bring a player and put two cones down, give them a ball. And then in five seconds in my mind, I can come up with a pattern. And I could say, okay, Johnny, pull, push, pull, push, do this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Okay. Five seconds later, I can come up with a second pattern. Five seconds later, I can come up with a third pattern. Five seconds later, I can come up with a fourth pattern so on and so forth. You don't have to, as a coach or trainer, you don't have to put a lot of thought into a two cone pattern because it's just, you put two cones down and you do some sort of exercise. Now, what the key thing is, these look extremely fancy and high level on the gram. So much so, like, I, I, I'm going to tell you this as a bonus. I actually had a meeting with a parent once, like three years ago, and we were having a conversation. It was an exit interview. And they were like, well, we don't really see the development, but when we go to this person who was a trainer and they gave the example of, well, he does all these two cone patterns and we can really see the development. And I said, yeah, if, if I put your kid into a pattern that he's never done before, I ask him to execute it and he it, then yeah, he's going to improve with some time with that pattern because he's going to be doing it on repeat, on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. So of course he's going to look better. And then I asked the follow-up question, do they play games? No, there's no games. So, of course, you don't see him implementing said skill in the game. You just watch the training. Whole separate point, but I just wanted, I wanted to give you that nugget to at least think about it. Let's keep moving. I will show you my what to look for framework trainer edition. Now, the next logical question is, how can I determine my child is really showing the mindset to take this to the next level in the future? You're probably stumped on that one. Fantastic question. I have my future pro player framework that is designed for players 12 and older. And here's a, a small snippet from it. Stretching every single day. Proper warm-up before practice. Proper cool down and stretch after practice. Getting 15 minutes of touches in the ball every single morning. Eating three healthy meals a day. No so or at least extremely limited because they want to take their game to the next level. Why 12 years old, though? Because at 12 and old, they start showing they mean business. And anything younger should be focused on mastery of the ball and love of the game. This will put to the test if your player really shows they want it versus just speaking about it. Because actions speak way louder than words. This will let you evaluate if your player is all talk or they are committed to potentially getting to a higher level in the future. This is a test to show you, mom and dad, that they mean business, that they're serious, that they're committed, that they're dedicated. Now, I need to add this. Just don't expect them to implement all right away because it's 16 of them. Give them a few months, maybe do three per month, then add three more next month three more the following month, because it takes about 21 days to build a habit. So it's going to take them time to add them, to help them push through it, just give them the guidance. Now, here is my future pro player framework with 16 targets that are perfect for players 12 and older. You're probably thinking though, Kyle, this is great, but we've never been told what my child should be achieving or doing on the field, specifically in a game. I would agree with you. 
I am sure you never had. But here is the great news. I got you. Surprise, I got you. I have every single position from 1 to 11. This means goalkeeper, right back, center backs, left back, defensive mid, center mid, number 10, left wing, right wing, striker. Mapped out just for you parents who don't know, and your child certainly doesn't know. You have the summary for each position and their specific roles in attacking, defending, transition, and set piece moments. Sounds great, right? Let me know in the chat if that sounds great. Or, yeah, let me know in the chat. Does that sound great or not? Let me know in the chat. Let's keep going. You guys will let me know. But wait, I forgot to tell you one more key detail. I also include per position, so every single position, game day objectives in a silver and gold tier ranking. So silver would be second and gold would be top. So you can see the example here. This is from the actual documentation. Example of a number nine, center forward, striker. Eight targets for a silver medal. You get it per player, per position. You and your child will never go into games blind again. It is specifically formulated for the 11 v 11 game, which is U13 and older. However, it can be modified. How awesome is that? No, seriously, how awesome is that? Just remember who's got your back. That's all I'm going to say. I will show you my 1 to 11 roles and responsibility framework, or what I also call the $12,593 blueprint. Completely game changing. Completely and utterly game changing. Boom. You probably think we are done. Well, I got good news. We are just getting started. A lot more to come. Kyle, you talked about nutrition and the importance about recovery. We have no idea what that looks like. I wouldn't expect you either. What's interesting is my parents were not high-level athletes at any point in their life. I love my parents to death. They know that. They never played anything even in high school, so they didn't have an idea either. But what you're going to find out is, and here's a small documentation to show you just a snippet of what you're going to find shortly. Let me fill you in on at least three secrets. Nutrition, so meals. I got this from a friend of mine who works with professional athletes all the time as a nutritionist. Her advice was two servings carbs, one serving vegetables, one serving protein per meal. Per meal. That was her advice. Stretching is key for long-term success, so flexibility. A proper warm-up and cool-down is key for the serious player. And all of these are about a serious player, by the way and committed, and dedicated. If you couldn't guess, I got you. I will share with you my post-game slash training framework. This will walk you through what a player needs to, from a nutrition recovery standpoint, after every single training session or game. There are literally no more excuses. Hashtag no excuses. But Kyle, you mentioned that training starts at home. What does that mean? This is a question for your player. How bad do they really want it? The best players put in training when no one is watching. So again, I show you a small snippet. The truth about long-term development. This can include training as the following, technical practice, speed and agility, physical training, studying the game, watching pro matches, and watching your own matches back. And there's more, by the way, but this is just players that want it, show it just outside of club practice. But practice doesn't have to be on a field only. 
It could also be studying or watching content related to development. So I will show you my own your development framework, which is key for your player in realizing their long-term potential. Remember, the player has to want it. It can't be the parent. And the entire goal of you becoming a 3% parent is helping your player level up and become a 1% player. But Kyle, you haven't told me how to do that. You're right, I haven't. But here now, you can see a small snippet, very small piece of it, about developing a 1% player. And a 1% player is somebody that's going to go to like an MLS academy, go to college, maybe become a pro. That's what a 1% player is. And almost every single player that plays competitive and parent to that respect has the goal of helping their child become a player that gets to that level. And I'm going to share you the information. Did you think that I would leave you hanging? I think so far I have shared quite a bit, but I do have maybe one more trick up my sleeve. I'll share with you my developing a 1% player framework. And this though is not for the lighthearted. This is for the go big or go home moment. So if your player really wants it, this is them going big or they're going to go home. That's why I said this is not for the lighthearted. But Kyle, what happens when your child becomes a 1% player? Aha. This is where networking and connections play the biggest role. The player is good enough and is showing the ability to get to the next level. And here's a small snippet, again, a very small piece of the action steps from a networking perspective. Networking connections mean absolutely nothing if the player isn't committed, dedicated, and actually good enough, and or actually good enough. Imagine trying to sell a crap used car. Many people won't want to buy it, right? Same here. If the player isn't good enough, it won't matter the type of connections. But I will leave you with this quote from my college professor. It's about who you know to get the job. It's about what you know to keep it. I almost forgot. I got you. I will share with you my networking framework that will be crucial for 99% of players who need that edge to stand out. Whew. That's a lot. But we still haven't discussed the final part. Now, you're probably wondering about the cost. I told you today was going to be game-changing. And I think so far, it has been just that. Game-changing. I'm sure at this point, and after all the information presented so far, the question probably on the tip of your tongue is the following. Will Kyle finally sell us something? Well, I guess it's time to let the cat out of the bag. Just the bonuses that I mentioned before, I value at over $20,718. And T said the following just about my 3% parent blueprint, it should be worth between $500 to $1,000. And here's how the fee of $20,718 is broken down. You have the $12,593 blueprint, which is the 1 to 11 positions. You have $797 for the Future Pro Player Framework, $797 for Own Your Development. You have $897 Post-Game Framework, 897 networking framework, $1,249 for the developing 1% player framework, $797 for the player's um, roadmap, $897 for the, the parent's roadmap, and then you have the $897 for what to look for for a coach, $897 for what to look for for a trainer. That totals $20,718 in value or cost. And I haven't even talked yet about the 3% parent blueprint price yet, or even the value calculator but please give me a drum roll hit that drum roll let me let me know Whew. it's a lot of information but go back because some people are telling me that they uh, it's breaking up but like i said just the frameworks in level two 
is valued over $20,000. And then the 3% parent blueprint, just from T alone, who already went through the course, said it should be between 500 to 1,000. Go ahead, go forward again. That drum roll, please. Boom. Because I will be giving you access to all of it. But the question is, how much? Not for $20,718, which is just the cost of the frameworks. Not for $15,495, which at this point would be insane value, considering what you would get. Not for $10,995. This is basically getting close to a steal. Not for $5,797. We're really doing this? Not for $2,697. We're really doing this? You'll get access to all of it for $1,600. One single payment of Okay, free. We weren't supposed to do that, but that's okay. Free. free. The whole thing is free. Top to bottom, free. That's right. 100% free. That means you'll get access to the 3% parent blueprint. You get the video version, free, which will be available on my YouTube channel. This will be available on my YouTube channel. And you also get the audio version for free. So if you don't want to watch a video, you get the audio version for free. It will be available on my podcast, the Pro Journey Podcast. You can find my podcast on any platform, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever else they're watch it on. You can find it there. You get both for free. Now, I want to talk about the 2% parent blueprint, which was all these extras that equaled $20,718 value. That's a part of the 2% parent blueprint, which is level two, that will also be free on my podcast and YouTube channel. The whole thing, free. They will be available after this live for free. However, we are still not done yet. There's still something to go. At the beginning, I said I was going to help two types of people. Group one, the people who are really struggling to provide the chance for their player. I promised you I would help you get closer today for free. And I'm still going to deliver on that big time. Group one, do you feel like I have kept my promise to you? Let me know in the chat, please. Give me a thumbs up or fire or maybe a heart if, um, if, if I kept my promise to you. I'm going to wait for you guys. Tell me. If I kept my promise to you. Now for everyone else. For those of you in the position to help me pay it forward. I'm going to show you how it's in the players and parents best long term interest. To have a parent who is educated. Education is truly key, and paying it forward can help a parent who truly needs the support to level up. It took me two years and 1,300 hours of time to put this entire thing together for you. 
They were 33 redos, seven drafts, and over 100 recording attempts. To be honest, <laughs> there were thousands of times I wanted to quit. But my wife told me, there is a nine-year-old kid, Kyle, who plays for a cash cow and who has a parent that will absolutely destroy their potential because they're uneducated. You have to do it for them. It's because of that I prevailed and put this together for you. I stand here after multiple attempts. The editing system failed with my recordings. Frustrated, I had to return back to the drawing board. I am confident that this is my best work to date. If you are ready to help pay it forward, we are ready to release the diploma series for the 3% Parent Blueprint. It is with a lot of pride that I am able to present you the official level one diploma, okay, for the 3% Parent Blueprint. But before I can tell you where to sign up to earn the diploma, Whose life here has been made better by all of the content, courses, lives, and documents or documentations? Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat. Whose life here has been made better by all of the content? courses, lives that I've done, and documentations that I've given you? Tell me in the chat. People. Then you already know how life-transforming education can be. So help me share this and do what is right for the kids. Give the official... 3% Parent Blueprint course to a friend, someone who needs the accountability, someone who needs the wake-up call, someone who needs help, and someone who needs the change. Someone who needs the structure to be in a better position to help their child, someone who really needs to make a change in their life to help their 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old child go through the youth soccer process. Maybe they joystick too much. Maybe they live through their kids. Maybe they think their nine-year-old is a striker, whatever it is. Whatever it is, help me pay it forward and help and help them help their nine-year-old player or 10-year-old or 12-year-old, whatever age it is, who really needs the help because the parent needs to invest in their education. And I'll give you a great example. I was at a tournament today. And we're just walking by fields. And what do you hear on the sideline the entire time? Parents going ballistic on the sideline. Screaming, joysticking, yelling at the referee, whatever it is. Losing their mind. Those are the type of people that need to invest in their education. And as a token of my appreciation, I will give you a 15-minute call with me. but only to the first 10 who order the official 3% parent blueprint. I will be happy to discuss anything with you on the call regarding your child's development and pathway. The official course with the diploma is $49.99. However, this needs to be very clear. You only earn a diploma when you pass the course. Inside the official course, you will find the full level one content, so that's the 3% parent blueprint, the testing that you have to go through, and then what I call ideas, or like it's really a mindset shift that you will need to agree with. And the key is I can't just hand out diplomas to anybody. You have to be willing in your mind to make a change. That's what this is about. So you have access to all of it for free. But the people that really need to make that mind 
set shift. You're going to have to go through the course. You're going to have to pass the testing. And you're going to have to agree to mindset shifts to actually earn the diploma. Understand that the official course is not for everyone. It is for the parents who really need to make a change or want to truly level up. The 3% parent diploma is earned, not given. So what this means is you can register for the official course, but that does not mean you are guaranteed to pass. You have to be willing as a parent to understand that you need to level up and make a change in your life. There's going to be a complete mindset shift. Now, I do want to be clear. There is no diploma with the free version, just the content. You get access to all the same content for free. However, if you take the official course and you pass the course, so you register for the official course and you pass it, you will receive the 3% Parent Blueprint Diploma. And the first 10 people who order the official course, I will give you a 15-minute call with me, and I will talk about anything you want regarding your child and their pathway and their development. This can be ordered right after this live is finished. Link will be available on my Instagram bio link and through my website eventually, but it'll be first through the Instagram bio link. But we're still not done. Shocking. <laughs> Why? Let me remind you of my goals. But first, let me not forget. I have two more bonuses completely free for you. The first thing, though, back to my goals, is to make ed to educate and, de and develop parents and players of the youth. i got to say the whole thing again. The first goal is to educate and develop parents and players of the U.S. youth soccer system. Two to make educational and developmental online content 100% accessible to people. I love to over-deliver and have for a long time. It's almost like the Amazon. Make it fast. You guys have asked for this. I have, as you know, an audio and video version of the Youth Soccer Playbook. Now, I have written the Youth Soccer Playbook Framework, which is the written version that many of you have requested. It's available in PDF format on my website. So kylecwilsonofficial.com. On my website, you can find the Youth Soccer Playbook Framework, the written version. It's like a summary of the whole thing. And every single framework that I mentioned, so from level two, every single framework has a video and a PDF download. The PDF download is available on my website, the same location that you'll find the Youth Soccer Framework. And I've just put together this secret project for players who have aspirations to get to college. As you know, I have a video series called the College Recruiting Masterclass through my YouTube channel. However, I have also finished the College Recruiting Masterclass Framework. So if you don't want to go watch all the videos, I put together the PDF framework for you to, to kind of, it's like a cheat sheet to help you go through it without going through the videos. You're welcome. And the next project has already been completed. The 1% parent blueprint. This is our level three. See you soon, guys. You have access to the 3% parent blueprint, the 2% parent blueprint, completely free. And then if you want to order the 3% the parent blueprint official course, you can. I'm going to make the link live right now. And the first 10 people that order will get a live call with me.